What is going on guys? My name is Hussein and in this video I want to describe the difference between extended validation certificate and domain validated certificate. You probably don't see this screaming at you when you click like uh, on, on these websites, but I'm going to show you an example of both. I'm going to first explain what is the difference between the two, maybe starting with the domain validated and then talking about the limitation and then talking about the extended validation certificate and the advantages of it. Pricing and all that stuff and why is it more expensive and all that jazz. And before we jump into the video, guys, I really recommend you watching how certificate works, how TLS works, how, how all that stuff. Check out this video that I made about certificates. There is like a playlist, I think, talking about just certificates, how they work, what does it contain, what is root, certificates all this chain stuff we need you need to understand that right i explained that but i'm gonna go through them really really quick all right so how about we start with the first one domain validation certificate all right, we're gonna start with the first one, the domain validation certificate. So a certificate is something that is issued to usually a server, can be issued to a client when you're using mutual TLS, but let's stick to a server, which is the most common scenario. So this is a server running some sort of a website, right? And uh, uh, let's say this uh, website is uh, hn dot com hosseinnasser.com right this is my website and i want by default this is not secure right because well how dns work i'm gonna ping the dns get the ip and establish the t uh, the tcp connection but that's not encrypted to do it encrypted part of the tls handshake is to serve a certificate that proves that you own this domain how do you prove that you own this domain well you tell a certificate authority which is right here a certificate authority like let's encrypt like dg sign says hey this is my domain and i want you to generate a certificate for me and here's my public key there's a key that i want you to sign with your beautiful private key that nobody knows except you okay so please sign this and in order to do that that server has to prove that they own hn.com, right? How do they do that? Well, they just ask, okay, sign this, and here's my domain. And one of the most popular way is for the server, the certificate authority, to connect to hn.com and places some sort of a file and reads it again. So uh, certbot is a very popular example, right? Certbot... Is a, is a software that you run locally, and when you run it, it listens on port 80, and it places a file. Usually it's a text file, right? And it has certain values, certain signature that the certificate authority is looking for, so it placed it here. And then it tells the certificate authority, try reading hn.com slash txt, because we just listened on that port. If that file exists that proves that the certificate authority actually pr uh, proves for the certificate authority that whoever owns this server actually owns the hn.com because they point to their IP address, like which is whatever, one, two, three, four, right? So yeah. So when we connect to hn.com slash txt to pull this file, we will point to the IP address, which will go us through all the internet and, and, and yeah. In this case, I, I just proved that I am basically owning this certificate, right? And then we're going to issue a domain validated certificate, right? That's it. That's the basic minimal stuff. That's where 99% of the internet websites running, including sketch.io. This is just a domain validated certificate. It's not going to tell you that, but it it is because that's the only thing it does right it just says hey i domain okay there you go domain validation secure certificate so i proved that this is a domain validated certificate that means i use the domain all right what are the problems of this and why do we need extended validation the problem with the domain certificate is if somehow a hacker can poison the dns entry here right where hn.com 
and points it to a completely different IP address. And it, we have we have seen this before. It happened a few years back, where a hacker managed to hack certain DNS entries and poison the DNS with another IP address, not one two three four, but replaces it with four 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 four, which is a server running by the hacker. How do you do a hacker skeleton like that? Jeez, I'm bad. That was supposed to be a skeleton. All right, so this is now the certificate authority will say, okay, uh, uh, the hacker will say, hey, I own hn.com. And here's the proof certificate authority is going to run cert bot, right? And it says, yeah, I'm going to place text. I'm going to listen port 80 and try to connect to me. And the certificate authority will ask the DNS, well, who was have this IP address? And say, oh, yeah. 4444, okay, this server. And it verifies that hn.com is definitely owned by that. And immediately, once it's on, it will hijack the certificate. It happens one. This is one way just of doing that, right? So and, and the moment you poison the DNS, another way, if, if the DNS expired, and, and in that minute, someone stole that DNS and just claim it for to their own, it can cause a problem. And, and then if they get the DNS certificate, they can do a clean man in the middle attack without the browser actually suspecting anything. Because yeah, the browser, when you connect to the client and, and that ser server or the, the server serves the certificate, you're gonna get a clean, green, secure screen just like that. It's gonna say connection is secure and you have no way of knowing because you can click here and you can say, okay, so OSH issued by Let's Encrypt, because who cares, right? Everyone can, can go to Let's Encrypt and just get that. So with domain validate certificate, there is no way to know that a hacker actually is controlling your website. That's why people invented extended validation. So let's go through that. So for extended validation, the certificate authority here, right? And anything above it, first obtains a, a, a domain validated certificate for the server, right? So that's okay. You have to first, you have to prove that one, two, three, four is owned by hn.com. And we can prove that easily as we described. But however, to do an extended validation, the certificate authority actually makes a phone call to whomever owns the server, it validates physical location, right? So there is like a manual process involved. It, it, it validates uh, legal presence, right? It validates physical presence. And it validates so much stuff and it's a man manual process. And once it does that, it's going to issue an extended validation on the domain validation. So it's an actually proven by the certificate authority that this server is indeed owned by hn.com and it's, it's issued to this company. I'm going to show you an example of how this looks like. So EV is very simple to understand. So there's like an extra process involved, right? And uh, before I show you an example of how it looks like, I want to know that, you know, certificate authority is an intermediate. So the parent root certificate has to be also be able to issue EV. And the certificate authority has to be able to issue uh, extended validation because the root itself has a lot of certificate authorities under it, right? Because it has like CA1, CA2, CA3, and we discussed that, right? Many, many certificate authorities are belong to one root. And if this ex uh, root uh, um, supports extended validation, then the certificate, then it can issue a certificate extended evaluation for the certificate authority, right? So that it can itself issue for the leaf certificate which are for these servers right and these are like thousands of them okay and then and and uh digi cert had a problem recently where they allowed certain certificate authorities 
that do not have the permission to issue extended validation to issue extended validation for normal ser normal terminal uh, terminal terminated uh, certificates like leave certificate despite those are not validated so they are shady oh, i'm not going to say shady but they, they are not authorized to issue evs but they have been issued EV. So what they did is, uh, did you start? They started just revoking all of the extended validation issued for, I, I think, fifty thousand of them. It is. It was a mess. It was like it happened literally three days ago or something like that. All right. So let's show you an example of how extended validation looked like. <laughs> Here's the price. If you want to get one, it's pricey. Three hundred dollars a year. All right. And you, because they involve like there's like that's what I get involved. It involves legal, physical operations of entity. The entity has been properly authorized. The entity has been exclusive. So yeah, if you want to trust, if you want to build a server and and issue a certificate that is trusted, literally, this is how it's gonna show. You're gonna see issued to under the certificate valid. If you don't see this line, that means it is not extended validation. It doesn't have extended validation. Like this, for example, right? It doesn't have extended validation. And most of the sites do not have extended validation, including Google, which I was really surprised, right? Probably because uh, Google, uh, they sign stuff themselves, global sign, right? So I was surprised about that. So. I'm not sure about what what's going on with that, but this is an example of a of a, a certificate of a certificate that is extended, right? An example of let's go to bad SSL as well. Bad SSL is a good example. I love going to this site and show. This is an extended validation example. If you go to this, it says issued to Mozilla Foundation. So Mozilla put, paid good money to DigiCert to actually issue an extended validation certificate for this puppy so pretty cool huh all right so guys so that was uh, extended validation versus domain validation certificate in a nutshell explained by example and uh, i'm gonna see you in the next one guys what should i to talk about next uh let me know in the comment section below subscribe for more uh, security backend engineering topics that's what i discuss in this channel i'm gonna see you in the next one you guys stay awesome goodbye